My involvement with the Torso murders ended with little fanfare in December of 1941. Officially, the case remained open and unsolved, but no new bodies were ever found, and no new suspects ever turned up. The mess at the Raven Room was hushed up, but there were those of us who knew that a ninth victim was found in a secret lab underneath the streets of Cleveland. They later identified him as Dr. Eisenstadt, an expatriated Austrian aristocrat who had fled Europe during the rise of Hitler's Nazi party. Whether this man was merely the last of a series of victims, as the police believed, or the torso killer himself, as I had always suspected, no one was able to say. His murderer remained unknown and at large. In early 42, I finally got my wish and was transferred out of Cleveland. By then, the U.S. of A. was up to its neck in the struggle against the Axis. And so the COI had been given new powers and renamed the OSS. I said my goodbyes to Mr. Sullivan and shipped out to Europe. Unfortunately, I couldn't rid myself of Dick Winslow. His connections landed him a cushy new post in England as liaison to the British Secret Service. By spring of 45, things looked good for the Allies. We made the push all the way to Nuremberg when I was called in to investigate a bomb-proof vault full of stolen, stolen art treasures. My reputation as an expert on Himmler and his SS spook squad and their crazy fascination with the occult, along with what they'd found among the miles of old mine shafts, had the brass calling for me in a hurry. Occult symbols marked the walls. Symbols that bore an uncanny resemblance to a bag of runes I still carried in my possession. It was my first solid lead on the Dahlia in four years. You've been pulling junk out of that joint for hours now. I swear, those crowds hoisted everything but the kitchen sink. I think they even got one of, got one of my paintings in there, and I ain't painted nothing since Mrs. Kaufman's art class in the fifth grade. Say, that reminds me. You ever come up for air, kid? Sir? Oh, yeah, the mouth. Yeah, the boys all say I put the patter in Patterson. Patterson, New Jersey, that is. That's, uh, that's where I'm from. What's your name, Private? Private Benjamin J. Schwartz. Sir. Uh, most folks just call me Benny. You're okay, Benny. How about filling me in on this room you found? found? Oh, yes, sir, Captain. I'll tell you what, it's a real creep show back in there. Kind of stuff make even boys call, call off crap in his drawers, you know what I mean? Yeah, some of the boys tried to go back in there, but they got that place all rigged up. Petey was nearly crushed to death when that big door shut on him. Whatever it is they got hidden back there, they sure didn't want just anyone waltzing in and hauling it off. This is it, Captain. Good luck. Thanks, Benny. Good work, Captain. I thought it'd take a bazooka to get that thing open. Thanks, Benny. Hey, the brass is gonna want to hear about this, and pronto. You better go tell him, then.
It's empty. Someone must have beat me to it. This one's empty too. I hope I'm not too late. Good work, Captain. We'll take over from here. Take over what from here? That gemstone there. I'm gonna have to ask you to hand it over. We're cataloging every item we take out of the place. I'll do no such, such thing. I've searched high and low for this gem, and I'll be damned if I turn it over to anybody but my superiors. Sorry, Captain. Just following orders from General Bradley. <laughs> if you like, you can take it up with him. In the meantime, I'm gonna have to insist you hand over the gemstone. All right, Sergeant. I'll play it your way. But you can be sure as hell I'm taking this up with your superiors. If you like, you can fill out a requisition with the Quartermaster Corps. I doubt you'll have much luck, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> 